The other way calls might come in, we're going to go back over to services here and go to hunt group. Calls can come into a hunt group. Now if a call, say, came into a hunt group, under the hunt group there's really one place to look at, the profile, and that talks about the hunt group. Now down the bottom here is the options uh, for the people in the hunt group. You can search for folks, get a listing of users, and then you can add people or remove them, move them back and forth. The top of the hunt group is what the hunt group is doing. This is a hunt group called Ben Test because Ben built it, so it's a test. The calling line ID, HG, that's going to get prefaced in the front of the caller's caller ID. So if someone called into this hunt group and it rang on to the Astra and the ben, uh, Danny Boy phone, it's going to say HG-J Gaffney as I call into them. Call waiting allowed on agents, that means people can take multiple calls. The group busy, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And the group policy, now hunt groups can be simultaneous, circular, regular, uniform, weighted, so on, different policies. The basics of these policies, a circular hunt group call is going to come into the hunt group. It's going to hit the first person on the list. If they don't answer after, say, two rings, it's going to skip to the next person, and so on. And it's going to always pick up where it left off. If it called the first person, the second person, if there were more, maybe it called the third person, they answered. The next call is going to start at the fourth person, and so on. A regular hunt group is a little different. It's going to always start at the top. So it'll always start with the first person, go to the next if they don't answer, and so on. But new calls are always going to try to start with the first person. Simultaneous, it rings everyone at once. And that's typically what I see most hunt groups are simultaneous. Uniform and weighted are a little different too. Uniform will try to send it out to the percentage, to uh, even percentages to everyone in the hunt group. So here we'd get 50-50. And if we wanted to do a weighted call dis uh, distribution, we could try to send out more calls to one person than the other. If I click on the weighted and hit apply, now if I go back up to the top of the hunt group, there's a weighted call distribution option. And it asks me, do I want to send 50-50 or I could say 75-25. Uh, as long as I'm adding up to 100, then I'm fine. And it would send out the calls as we, hit, we, we, we have it set. So I'm going to go back over to the profile. If you're using a simultaneous group, you don't need to skip because it's not going to skip anywhere. It's all ringing at the same time. But you do want to look at the call forward after X number of seconds, and that's about five seconds per ring. That's how long the phones are going to ring. If you are doing a circular or a weighted or something other than simultaneous, you want to do some math in your head and say, okay, we're going to ring X number of times per person. You want to make sure if we ring three times per person, you've got enough people in the hunt group and enough time here that it all matches up. So three times per person is going to be six rings, and 30 seconds is about six rings. I tend to like to pad it. I might go 33 seconds just to be sure. And then after the call doesn't get answered, it's going to go out to somewhere else. 5,600 happens to be my auto attendant. So I could have a live call come in, get live answered by people, and then if there are no one answers, it goes to the auto attendant. And that's typically what the flow is. It might go to a second auto attendant where more people might answer. It might go to uh, a voicemail box. It might go to a... 24-hour service line, it could go anywhere you'd like, and that can be an internal or external number. So I'm going to kind of set these back to some normal settings. If I hit apply, there we go. Call forward not reachable. If you turned on call forward not reachable, what's going to happen there is kind of a poor man's disaster recovery. If a call came in and your system, uh, your building was down, if your internet was down or your power was out, your phones are down on the desks. They're not working, they don't have power, they don't have internet. But your phone system is still working. It's still working in DSCI. If we can't reach your phones, the system tries to pull the phones every once in a while, tries to ping them and say, hey, you're out there. And if it can't reach them, it's going to call forward enable unreachable. And it's going to go automatically out to, say, the hunt group or the auto attendant or wherever you'd like it to go. So that's kind of a good uh, disaster recovery. It would only get used, again, if we, phones couldn't be reached.